If we could please find our way to some seats. Thank you. I'm <laughs> 
Good afternoon. Well, welcome to the 12th annual presentation of the 25 Ducks Awards. Whether you are here in the room or there on Zoom, thank you for joining us for this celebration. My name is Rafe Beck. I have the great pleasure of serving as the executive director of the UO Alumni Association. We're proud to co-sponsor these awards once again with both the Duck Store and the Emerald Media Group. So thank you to our co-sponsors. The UOAA has a three-part mission to foster lifelong relationships among UO students and alumni, to deepen engagement with these same groups, and to act as an advocate on behalf of the university and Duck alumni around the world. The 25 students whom we honor today help us to fulfill all three parts of this mission. Your leadership has helped create lifelong relationships to engage with your classmates and to advocate for fellow students towards making the UO an even better institution. Thank you for doing all of these things. Many of you will be graduating in a few weeks and others of you have a little more time on campus until that happens. In either case, even if it may feel like you've been here a long time, I want to alert you that you have far more years ahead of you as Duck alumni than you have had as Duck students. Some of the same things that make for a great student community make for a great alumni community. It requires people who volunteer to lead in fostering those lifelong relationships, engaging fellow alumni, and in advocating for the university. And it is our experience that great student leaders often become great alumni leaders. So when you walk at graduation, and whether that's in a few weeks or in a future year, we hope you wear your 25 ducks stole with pride. And we also hope that you feel the opportunity to continue being a leader in the years to come. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Alma Fumiko Jesus, a self-described storyteller by trade and matchmaker by heart, Alma has over 20 years of experience in marketing, communications, and collaborative leadership. She currently serves as Vice President of Resource Development at United Way of Lane County, where she supports a dedicated team of professionals who mobilize resources and forge partnerships to foster a thriving and resilient community. Alma currently serves on the boards of the Pacific Cascade Federal Credit Union and the Springfield Public Library Foundation. She also serves as president of the KLCC Foundation Board and as chair of the Strategic Planning Committee for the Lane Transit District. Alma is, the grad, is a graduate of the UO School of, Communication, of Journalism and Communication. She received her BA in advertising in 2002. And when she is not serving others, which is most of what she does, Alma enjoys spending time with her spouse and their very spoiled dog, I am told, Stout. Please welcome Alma Jesus. I have a lot of things, but uh, another foot is not one of those. So thank you so much, Rafe. And thank you to the uh, UO Alumni Association and the Student Alumni Association for inviting me to share with all of you today. I truly love that this program is um, a part of 
it's, it's here because of three different organizations, actually four different organizations that I really appreciate and that have touched my life. The Alumni Association, the Duck Store, um, when, when I was in school, the Oregon Daily Emerald, because it was a daily newspaper that I picked up every day on my way into campus. And uh, the Student Alumni, uh, Alumni Association as well, and I'll share a little bit more about that. Um, like I said, the, the Emerald was what I picked up when I came to campus every day to stay informed and know what was going on. Um, the Duck Store gave me, my, gave me my first professional job out of college, and the Student Alumni Association started while I was the marketing manager at the Duck Store. So it's super exciting to see. I feel like everything has come full circle. So I'm, I'm very honored and very humbled to be here um, being able to share with all of you. And I'm really excited just to see all of the work that you to see and read about all of the work that you've done. I have to admit, typically when I'm sharing with a group of amazing folks like you, it's about United Way or one of the many organizations that I get to wear a hat and support. So taking um, talking on this scale about myself is a little bit out of my comfort zone. So I'm really stretching here. So I appreciate you all um, being patient with me. And if what I have to share helps you, then I, I'm totally comfortable and well, not comfortable, but I'm okay with being uncomfortable if it's gonna be helpful for anyone. But I think you are all very far along on your journey in a lot of ways. So I'm really excited to share a little bit more. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I stumbled into the nonprofit world, as well as a few things that I wish that I was told 22 years ago when I was in your shoes um, about, I was about to graduate and I was trying to find a job. And I, I assume that many of you are already embracing much of what I'm gonna to share today, but this might just confirm that you are on the right track. So that is my hope. So I moved to Oregon from the island of Guam in 1997 to study journalism at the, here at the U of O. I wanted to be a copywriter and develop ideas for the Ad Council, which I'm not even sure if that exists anymore because I don't watch cable television anymore. Um, but I wanted to make cool, world-changing public service announcements and advertisements. My goal was to use advertising for good and not evil. And the truth was really, I just needed a stable job where I didn't have to struggle in the same way that I saw my parents struggle when I was growing up. Because many internships were unpaid at that time, I wasn't able to diversify my resume with relevant positions. I worked evenings at a market research call center, calling people on the phone and doing phone surveys. It was very fun, if y'all can imagine. Um, y'all don't get that because you have cell phones now, but back in the days of landlines, people would call and do surveys and I would get yelled at and I did that for four years while I was in school and then partially while I was, um, when I got my second job. Right after graduation, I was able to hustle my way into a part-time marketing coordinator role at the UO Bookstore, which is now the Duck Stores. I told them I was a graphic designer. I technically wasn't, but I think I had, I smiled, I made eye contact, and I seemed like a pleasant person to work with eight hours a day, five days a week. So I think they kind of looked aside about the, uh, the graphic design thing. And I learned a lot while I was in that position. But they really did see an active listener who was passionate about being on a team. And that is a really big, important part when you go out into the world, showing that you can be a on a team and that you are someone that is going to help the folks that you're working with. I took advantage of every opportunity I could to learn from my manager and others in the organization and was able to get a full-time role. So I was able to quit my evening job within the year. And in 2004, I was promoted to marketing manager and focused on helping the duck store build relationships outside of the university within our greater community here in Lane County. I began volunteering and deepening connections with others in Lane County as well. In 2011, I took a chance and I learned to be brave. I left the duck store and went to work for Capelli Miles, an ad agency in here in Eugene and in Portland. Um, this ad agency worked with the duck store, so I already had a connection to them. So there's gonna be a theme here talking about our connections. At that time, in that role, I took some risks. I learned, again, to stretch out of my comfort zone, and I continued to build relationships. I became a court-appointed special advocate, or CASA volunteer, um, while I was working at Capelli Miles. My employer supported me volunteering in the community. This is a, a program where I was advocating for children in the foster care system. And while that work was rewarding, and I was able to help children one at a time or a family at a time, I struggled with treating the symptom of a problem and I was really yearning for the opportunity to work on more systemic change and prevention. So our kids weren't even getting taken, weren't getting taken away from the parents in the first place. And of course that uh, manifesting of wanting to like think about systemic change, um, the universe is funny and the universe was listening. Um, in 2015, I got a call from a friend 
a former duck store co colleague. Again, you can see the theme here. She was the marketing director at United Way, and she was also volunteering with me on another board that I was on. She shared that a resource development position had come available, and I told her I was absolutely not interested in fundraising. I didn't want to ask anyone for money. I didn't want to do any of that. Um, that was not my jam. I was a relationship person, and I was a connector. And she said, this isn't about fundraising. This is about building relationships and connecting people in meaningful ways and building hope for our future and ensuring that people feel positive and feel hope going forward. Obviously, she was in marketing. She was really good at her job. <laughs> and so I went and I applied at United Way and sort of the rest is history. This July, I'm going to be celebrating nine years with United Way. And when I was in your shoes 22 years ago, I would have never imagined that I would be a vice president of anything, much less a nonprofit organization like United Way here. I was a kid from Guam whose family struggled, and I was determined to break the cycle that my parents are struggling with and find a job that fills my soul. My journey was not linear, and yours might not be either, to get where you need to be. I know this weighs heavily on many of you, on the minds of many of you. I know we have a couple of sophomores, a number of juniors and seniors right now. Along with everything else that's going on in our world, you're also thinking about what is next for you? What kind of job are you going to get? What do you want to do? And where are you going to go? And just remember, it's not a linear path. Every place you go, everything you do, all the connections you make, those will follow you through to the next, next level, next place, and wherever else you go. So. You really all do have the answers. I'm just gonna say, being here in this room, receiving these awards that you have, you have the answers. By being nominated for this award, you really are doing all of the things that took me many years of trial and error to learn. So I'm just gonna tell you a couple of them. And again, I know that these are things you're probably already doing. So hopefully this just reinforces to keep doing what you're doing right now. Number one, build and nurture relationships. I do love that this award is peer nominated um, and it reflects service in the community. So you had to have someone who saw the impact of what you do and was able to nominate you. Or maybe you asked someone to nominate you and I totally respect the hustle because that's what we gotta do to make sure people know. Sometimes we have to recognize that sometimes folks might not see us because some of us fly under the radar and it's really important for you to recognize that because others will recognize that in you as well. So it's really important for you to stay connected to the people who fill your cup and the people you trust to challenge you to stretch out of your, your comfort zone. And it's important for you to expand your network and meet people who have different points of view than you to help diversify your lens. Because diversifying your lens is going to help you be able to grow and be a stronger member of a team and a stronger person in our community. Nurture relationships that help you be authentically you and help you grow. And again, the fact that you are already engaged in your community and volunteering is huge. So. Keep that up, keep doing it. And also remember that the world, our world right now is much smaller than we think. You never know when someone you worked with will show up in a different organization or in a different capacity. And you don't want that relationship to be a barrier. You want it to be a key. So just be very mindful of that. I've been in situations where um, luckily I, I'm not a bridge burner. I am a, we'll see what goes on with this, but I'm gonna cross with uh, caution next time. And uh, there've been situations where folks have come into an interview and they're like, oh, I had a reaction interaction with that person. And so they have to do a lot more work in that interview and it makes it much harder. So just be mindful that we are all interconnected. We're in this ecosystem. And when one thing happens on over here, it'll come back to you over there. So we just wanna be very mindful of that. I went a little off script, so I'm being mindful here. <laughs> and number two, be brave. I feel like some of these are cliche, but they are absolutely true. And I wish people told me this when I was, again, 22 years ago in the shoes, in your shoes, but not in an award ceremony. I think I was like in the EMU just hanging out. I worked in the fishbowl that there was a grateful bread bread shop there. That was what I was doing while, while folks were getting awards. So be brave and take chances on opportunities when you can. Reach out to your network, ask for help and explore solutions. Look in the mirror and tell yourself out loud. I mean, I know again, this, this sounds like very Auntie Alma telling you what to do, but it is, it's, it's, you gotta do it. Say out loud what you wanna do, where you wanna go, and what you hope for in the world. Again, it might sound silly, but it is impactful. And it's important for us to have that self-compassion and remind ourselves of what is important to us. If things don't come out the way you planned, 
pick yourself up. I know this is going to sound like a, some song lyrics to some folks in the room, but pick yourself up, dust yourself off, adjust and try again. Be brave, consult your network, take chances and stay the course because you're going to get there. And my final piece of advice is to practice empathy, not only for others, but again, really for yourself. The person you were yesterday is not the person that you are today, and tomorrow is going to be different too. Every day we grow and learn and change. So give your space, yourself space to slow down, assess your situation, reflect on your comp accomplishments, and adjust what doesn't work. Nurture and consult your network. Again, network and connections, really important. And be brave and kind to you so that you are strong enough to do the same for others. I promise you, you're all on the right track. Again, just by being here, just by having the nominations, just by having those connections in the community. So stay the course, stay connected, and remember to support and take care of each other. Thank you. <laughs> Technical difficulties, sorry guys. <laughs> First off, I would like to thank Alma for your amazing words of wisdom. Your presentation was both enlightening and inspiring and your expertise has made a significant impact on all of us here today. My name is Emma Delamico, and I will be presenting the winners of this year's 25 Ducks Award with Isabel Sosa and Cooper Gast. First up, we have Yash Akori. I'll get it right the first time. <laughs> Next, we have Fendi Afanuna. Next, we have Anne Marie Armstrong. Next, we have Grace Berendino. Next, 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Caitlin Bolentini. Next, we have Beatrice Cobanera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, we have Kayla Cho. Next, we have Addie Cooper. Next, we have Riley Dion. Next, we have Makeda AOB. Next, we have Olivia Goldblatt. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Cara Watto. Next, we have Lucien Letsutsky. <laughs> Next, we have Leslie Rastora. Oh, 
Next, we have Emma Leland. Congratulations. How are you? Hi. Thank, you. Thank you. I love your curls. You're so pretty. <laughs> I love you. Perfect. Next, we have Olivia Lupovich. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Luke McCullough. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Next. Next is Madison McDonald. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Marcus Mullen. Congratulations. Cheers. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Next is a uh, Makai Norman. Thanks for Ooh, baby. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Joshua Pugh. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so <laughs> Go, <John. laughs> Next is Julia Rude. Congratulations. Thanks. Next is Mia Solis. Congratulations. Next is Lizbeth Solorzano. Solorzano? Solorzano. Solorzano. I am so sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
to my family. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> the last nominee is unfortunately not able to be make it with us, but Guppy Upal. In addition to our award winners, we would like to take a moment to recognize anyone in the room who nominated a student for this award. Nominations come from students, faculty, and staff around the university. If you nominated a student for this award, could you please stand up? A round of applause. Thank you. Every day, students around our campus are doing extraordinary things, often going unrecognized for all that they accomplish. Thank you for recognizing the hard work of these ducks and taking the time to show them that you appreciate what they do on campus and our community. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Feel please feel free to mingle and make sure you pick up your copy of the 25 Ducks edition before you leave. If you would like to take a photo with Alma, you can do so at the very end. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.